Hello everyone. Welcome to Tech Podcast 101. Today we have Ishan Chaube, GDSE lead at VVC and MLSA Beta and also doing his bachelor's in AML at VVC. Welcome to podcast Ishan. Thank you Sumuk. Thank you for having me. How are you? All good. Yeah. How are you? How is been life? Everything's going great. What How about you? Been... Yeah. It's all good. So one thing he forgot to mention that we we study in the same college, of course. Yeah, we study in the same college, uh, and he is my junior. Yeah. Okay, Shan. Let's start with the first question. So, why did you join engineering? Uh, mostly, uh, when I was young, I was, I grew up a lot around computers. I initially always wanted to get into tech, so that's why. I felt engineering was something very close to technology, at least in India. So that's why I chose the standard Indian path of uh, writing the JWE, all that, and then failed JE, of course, and got into VVC. And I chose AIML as my stream, so not a bad place to be. Yeah. Initially, I wasn't uh, that aware of AI as a whole domain, but then uh, I really researched upon the artificial intelligence domain as a whole and the advantages that it can have in my career later on. So that is why, I I mean, upon researching, I saw a lot of scope in this. I know because of the scope itself, the whole uh, domain was introduced. I mean, last year probably. So that's why I was intrigued by it. I wanted to get into AI. Yeah, I wanted to build I mean, interesting projects, all of that um, stuff. So that's why I, I thought of giving AI yeah, a try. Yeah, I got in, hopefully. Nice session. Like, what motivated? Or who motivated and inspired you to join engineering? Uh, I mean, my family, I mean, my grandparents and my father, of course, they are engineers. They didn't tell me to get into engineering. They told, choose something else. But then, I, as I said, I really grew around technology initially, technology and music. So this was something that came along very naturally. And... I, I didn't know where else to go. Commerce, background, arts. I didn't think about that at all. I mean, I wanted to take up science, get into tech as soon as possible. So this is the, I think this is the most quickest way to get into technology, going engineering. This is the standard path that every engineer takes in India. So it's nothing of that motivation, but it was just a childhood thing, just an interest. That's great. What question. about you? What about so, you? Like when did you, about me, I wanted to join medical, but right. somehow I joined engineering. Hmm. And now I'm, I'm here at final year. Next week I have exams. Yeah. Doing well. Yeah. So... I was saying that when did you started your coding or programming journey? Is it before engineering? Did oh, you know coding? No, no. So before engineering, uh, yeah, we did a little bit of coding. I, had, I took I, I took PCMC in my PUC. So we were taught programming. It was very, I mean, bookish knowledge where it was nothing practical. And, it was just few programs that you had to just mug up and just write it on the paper during the exams. It was on the Bussy, the blue blue interface. Yeah. They used to make us code there. I mean, just copy paste, typing all day. That's it. So before 12th, the, that was the scene. I mean, during 12th and 11th. Then after I got into engineering I was during my first semester itself I was like exploring all the domains 
I started off with uh, Harvard's CS50. So that really, I mean, it opened a lot of doors for me because it was the best introductory course that I came across. And it was very, it was just like, uh, it was not hard. It was just like a movie and I could learn so much, even basics of programming, how computers work, how data structures work, what is AI, databases, all of that. So initially I was very interested into machine learning. I would dive deep into that initially. Yeah. Started getting into Python because Python is important initially. No. That's it. That was my initial start with programming. Just a curiosity. Yeah. So like, uh, how was your three years of engineering? Now you are in sixth sem. What are the things you did in first and second year and fifth sem? What are the things you learned? I mean, honestly, these three years have been very, very quick. I, I don't know how I came to third year and almost in what in, in, in a few months, six sem is going to end as well. So this, the time really goes by here. Yeah. So I didn't have some plan of some sort. There's genuine curiosity initially. I always wanted to explore different domains. Like I said, I started off with machine learning. Then, yeah, hopefully I got into the core team of machine learning in the Google Developer Student Club when I was in my what maybe second year first year i think yeah. so with that i had a few opportunities to discuss with seniors about ml what to learn what how to how they faced issues with ml and stuff so initially during my first year it was all of uh, exploration trying out different things. Later in my second year, I was doing, was doing an Andrew MG course for machine learning specialization in terms of tech, but uh, was also playing sports, all of that in college, interdepartment, all that co-curricular. Apart from tech, I uh, think I was exploring myself. So. Really nice place. Since I'm from Bangalore, I, I don't know much about myself. So in first year, I didn't have friends here. And when I have had friends in second, I made friends in second year. Used to roam a lot in Mysore. So yeah, that was about it. Apart from that, the normal regular college, 8.30 college, it ends at 4. Same thing, nothing new. All those subjects. Third year now, so it's, it uh, it's the same. I mean, building a few projects here. Nothing, do, nothing much. So you said you explored Mysuru. In Mysuru, which places did you went? And how is it? Did you like I mean, Mysuru? yeah, it, it, it's a very different place from Bangalore, of course. Uh, the vibe is very low tone here. It's very calm and peaceful. People are really supportive, very good here. And of course, uh, Mysore Palace and other places in Mysore. There are a few good restaurants that are opening. Infosys campus. We had an industry visit, which I missed because of some issue but really really good place yeah do you still play sports or games in your college how do I mean, you manage your time no from second year i'm not really playing any sport we usually go to the gym that's all yeah apart from that uh, getting into how do i what is your other question. Like, uh, how did you manage your time? College, projects, DSA, and sports? 
uh honestly i mean after college you have time i mean to it ends at four college ends at four max so after that probably chill for another one or two hours and build something or discuss with your friends to do stuff i mean if what i have observed is that even if i put some you know time slot to do something in case let's say from 5 to 7 nights i mean schedule in my calendar that i'll do something but then it doesn't really work out sometimes sometimes we we'll go out and we may not be there so that consistency will go and initially like, that time slot is just there in your calendar to on focus so instead of that uh, every day is like a different day so if you are probably learning from 4 to i mean from 6 to 7 today tomorrow you may not be doing that you you can do that a little earlier if you are you know interested quite lazy though i'm not very active i also keep procrastinating a lot of procrastination coming to uh, building projects i most of my work is done during the weekends because i put most of my time to projects during weekends and late nights so doesn't matter it's it's like i i want to build it i want to try it out it's it's nothing like it's some work for me it's like genuine curiosity genuine eagerness to build build that even though i fail i failed in multiple projects i mean i don't know what to do so and of course chat gpt youtube google it was some help that's it coming to dsa of course i'm not very consistent with dsa but yeah i i do know basic dsa i am not a big competitive programmer here i am very interested in building projects working with different domains different stacks trying out different tech stacks so i feel that is more interesting than just you know working on some stupid problem i mean it's not stupid but to me it's a little boring i know dsa is important i will yeah. have to start so you said building projects it's like build and learn so what are the projects you have built till now and what are the domains in which you have built uh so initially i have always been building this ai projects and building ml models even in hackathons all projects related to AI. we built a, recently our team built one folklore ai generator where we use uh, ai to tell you stories based on indian history that are true based on indian mythology so when you click on generate it will give you a short tale story that is based on indian history so that was one simple project another one was another was an ai summarizer web app where anyone can just paste whatever paragraph they want to summarize and it will give a good amount of summarization the problem was uh, i mean a lot of open ai credits would go to that summarization yeah. part and didn't have money to <laughs> initially and i had 15 credits it all came down to zero so it's still there when i get open ai credits i can probably optimize it later and another few projects attendance generator i mean attendance monitor stress prediction of course this hard disease prediction with these models i used to do this in second year but nowadays i am very focused into web development yeah building projects based on monster it's good ishan you have hmm? built so many projects in various domains like ai and web so you said you participated in many hackathons 
how was your experience in hackathon what are the challenges difficulties can you brief about it i mean it's a really good experience the whole 24 hours of um, the target to build something build i mean work towards a problem so the problem comes uh, with a lot of uh, you know you need to uh, make sure you're a team player so you can't do everything on your own you have to you know divide tasks to the team and work with the team together so that is one thing you need to be careful about you choose your team wisely okay make sure that people understand you even though they i mean don't you can just try to be you know a little just be sure about you know you have to win this hackathon together just build something don't just quarrel around apart from that uh, everyone has a role everyone needs to have a specific role everyone cannot be doing everything everyone needs to assign a task or something those 24 hours will be uh, i mean most of it will be fun uh, there will be some time you will code you will actually code you will you will meet different people i met very i mean good people during my hackathons because people from other colleges also join you so you get to know their story you get to know what they are building what they are up to so it's a you know real motivation for you because they are like almost your age same age they have different ambitions and you can learn from that so i think yeah apart from that make sure making sure that the product is fully not the product the problem is fully solved just make sure that until the end of the hackathon somehow it is deployed your project successfully works that's the main aim in case you don't win a hackathon you just have a good project for your resume so that's just a win win situation yeah same here when i started with hackathons like starting i was not able to get what is there and what are the problem statements then mm. gradually i got to know what is the problem statement and i started building with it so what is your ex- first hackathon and how is the how, how was your first hackathon experience my first hackathon experience i mean is not that good honestly so <laughs> it was not really that great i was I mean, it was decent I expected uh, a lot more but the I, mean, I don't blame the committee you know, but it happens usually you know the whole team is very busy with in they they have a lot of participants and all but yeah finally we could build something to show yeah that's true so like you have joined various communities and you are leading gdsc and also a microsoft learn student ambassador so my question is like why did you join community and what is your experience in community and leading a community okay so the idea of the google developer student club was i knew about this program way back when i was in 12th standard nish the idea was not uh, idea is to you know i i knew the whole idea where you know few people who are efficient with technology uh, you know helping other students and so yeah so i knew about gdsc way back in my 12th grade I mean, I used to see these global programs that all over the world there are these small student communities for I mean, student developers, tech enthusiasts. I knew about this program, but uh, yeah, when I joined VVC, so I was very shocked to you know see that there's a GDSC here also. Yeah, uh, Anir, our senior, was leading the community at that time, so I wanted to. I uh, joined the community so yeah i somehow got into the community as a machine learning core member you were also a part of the team you were the co-lead so i was very uh, i wanted this uh, 
place where you know we could help students or other fellow batchmates or juniors to get started with tech or help them understand about specific aspects of technology so this was the idea behind getting being a part of gds and of course when i you know was a part of gds i i wanted to also lead the community someday i could see myself you know leading a tech community so that's where the i mean in a belief came that i think i might be able to help other students grow and maybe lead a tech community in my college so i applied for gdsc and i became the lead in 2023 so the whole idea of gdsc what i feel is when i was starting off with technology i didn't have mentorship or that guide as to where i should start or what i should do if i'm interested in specific domain what i should get started with it's a very confusing place to be initially i i really wasted a lot of time just exploring doing this i didn't have a like specific pathway specific you know idea of how getting into machine learning is getting into web development all of that so now i want students to get that from me you know from the community in case a junior or someone joins a college i mean they join our community they get in touch with us so we can help them we or seniors or any of us who are in the community like we can help them because we have all faced that issue you don't want our juniors to you know waste time on something we wasted our time back then initially i mean it's it's just a genuine help that they need so that's why gdsc is meant for helping other students to get started off with technology and also build i mean amazing workshops coding competitions and all of that to make tech fun because in college if you see technology i mean especially in india we see uh, it's it's really boring honestly they don't make it that interesting so through gdsc we, you know, it becomes really interesting and people i mean they compliment they they join our workshops they come along well they thank me they thank the team so this is something this is a very beautiful community i like i'm absolutely honored to become the lead here it's, the community is extremely good there yeah. the juniors are really smart Yeah, that's it. MLSA. Yeah, MLSA is also likely the same thing. I didn't apply to MLSA to, I mean, become. I didn't know much about the Microsoft's Learn Student Ambassador program initially. So I was, uh, I just applied because, you know, some of my colleagues were. You know, I thought I wouldn't get in, but I, I got in, and yeah, I had the, I had that opportunity. got into the microsoft student community helping students we recently conducted a, a workshop on azure git and all so it's a very helpful thing for juniors as well as new batchmates to get started off yeah apart from that we do get a lot of perks for being the lead as well as the yeah, ambassador we get a lot of swags yeah So, how is these communities helping you in your engineering life or your career? These communities. This has, I mean, I I think GDSC is the reason why I am able to talk to you in this podcast also. Because in it, when I was in first year, I I didn't talk to anyone. I was like full silent boy, nothing. no talking nothing so when when i became the gdsc lead that's when i was like forced to talk i was forced to you know go ahead and talk in front of juniors talk in front of an audience because they look at me and you know set a bar for themselves right so if i am yeah. really very introverted much i'm not interacting with the community members 
so that is not something that a lead would do right so that's how i yeah. you know started talking i saw myself getting improved i mean i was improving all along the way so i could talk my communication skills were better i was not uh, scared of going and speaking on stage for initially i was very scared starting no way no way i could go on stage and talk but after getting into the tech community it is it's been a pleasure talking to everyone in the community even when i go to some tech fests or conferences you know we we get to see a lot of uh, software engineers developers and other student community people so we do interact and it's a it's a really good time that you have yeah that's great community is helping us to like build our own profile personal branding and also helps us in public speaking skills right. yeah so are there any specific areas within ai ml you are most most uh, passionate about or you are exploring more uh, i am most uh, interested in natural language processing i really love that domain because there are versatile projects that you can using natural language processing according to me you don't even need that that kind of computational power like we need for computer vision because for computer vision we need to have a good amount of gpu to you know, process images and all but that's why i think natural language processing is very interesting apart from apart from nlp i would say natural vision is definitely interesting but for me top would be natural language processing yeah i mean yeah there's a great natural language processing these days it's evolving and many new ideas or products coming with domain of nlp so there are more many changes and many tech related news like how do you stay updated with tech related news and changes or new software products okay so you read blogs and reddit and other websites like and linkedin but what i have done uh, during the last couple of months is that I have, uh, there are these newsletters of technology i mean they send slight snippets of uh, what's happening in technology in your email so i have subscribed to quite a few of them so you know, every day during morning or whenever i'm free i just open my email i get to know about what's happening in tech so what's going on who's doing what yeah i'm interested in startups and venture capitalists and all of that so i i do keep a track of what's happening in that sector as well so subscribing to you know newsletters like that is really helpful because instead of uh, just going to google and scrolling articles if you get a targeted information about a specific domain that's that's well and good for you i feel that's a good thing to have everyone should you know at least have one newsletter from which they get their you know information as a power okay so like you said newsletters like can you name some newsletters or articles you read oh yeah i i have subscribed to tldr too long don't read tldr is one that's the absolute favorite apart from that the neuron the neuron is good apart from that i think there's there's another one no idea yeah the new, most of it I, i follow the neuron and tldr because they have different domains that let's say interested in startups yeah so it will just send me emails i mean news regarding tech startups and that's really cool yeah so like what advice you want to give for a person who is just wanted to start his or her journey into aml branch or aml domain uh, for anyone who is starting off with aml i would recommend them to 
start with a little bit of mathematics because a little basic mathematics, a, a little revision of mathematics. Just getting right into AI, there will be a few algorithms where maths is really important. I think a little bit of math. Apart from that, I wouldn't say start off with uh, AI right away. I feel the right path would be starting off into web web development and then coming to AI because this mistake was I I did this mistake and I do regret it. But what happens is uh, when we start off with machine learning, we build models and all that. All of that happens, and then later on, yeah, we don't know how to integrate those models. We don't know how to deploy it. Right. So if we cannot deploy a model, we cannot integrate it to a backend and a frontend. So it's just, it's. I mean, I think it's just a waste. Even in a hackathon, just yeah. building a model is not something the, you know, the judge is looking for. So when you have basic idea of web development to build front end, back end, and integrating models, that's one way to start. And then, of uh, of course, get into machine learning. Start with all the graph regression, classification, supervise and supervise traditional path. You can Google that. You will get a good roadmap. Just a normal type of. But then start off with web is what I would suggest. Yeah, that's great advice, Ishan. So, like you said, you have explored AML and web both. So, like, how did you explore both of this? Is it by YouTube or articles, docs? Like, what is your go-to source? Uh, actually, I've used quite a few resources. I don't, I don't usually, you know, pay for some course or something because there's a lot of uh, free content available, and you can learn from that really easily. It's it's really good. So for me, go to place where I can learn quickly is I think one is definitely free code camp so their uh, YouTube videos I mean they're really amazing if I want to you know let's say I want to explore Kubernetes or something I just go probably if there's a video on Kubernetes and free code camp I will that's my first click otherwise there are quite a few sources even in even Indians have many. Kirat Singh, Kurma Kushwaha, Code with Hari. There are a lot of Indian guys also. They're doing really well. So, for me personally, I would go with Free Code Camp. Uh, yeah. That, uh, apart from that, reading docs. Reading docs is very important if you're starting off. After you have a basic knowledge just go to the documentation and there will be few commands that you can run on your command prompt just try those out install packages write your first programs write your first frameworks whatever that would be my second go to place first would be youtube of course then docs then it could be you know just trying it out by myself thank you for suggestions ishan so final is like what do you want to say about tech podcast 101 and our audience it's a really good initiative because you are uh, bringing out uh, people from the tech industry to students people who are you know who have already I've seen your previous videos. Yeah, I've seen your previous videos. Yeah, they're really helpful for students who are looking to get into tech, get in, get good jobs, get go to masters and all of that. So I'm really honored to be here. And yeah. yeah, it's a really good initiative. I wish you the best. I hope this podcast takes off. Thank you, Ishan. Thank you so much for joining us today.